could pick me up. Just international news, local news, technology trends, a personal. What is my computer doing? Um, the way Hollywood and media are treating some of my favorite franchises and it's been a lot of things that I uh, just I'm getting depressed the world is a depressing place right now yeah I know I know hashtag first world problems yeah yeah whatever but just it's kind of one of those things like I don't smoke but I kind of wish I did so that I had a legitimate excuse so I could say, why can't we all just get a bomb? You know, one of those things. I need to pick me up. I need, I need something to get engaged in. I need something to drag me out of this. You know, Ava, I hear psycho, psychiatric drugs help. Mm -hmm. They can, I agree, just... Yeah, it, it, it's so hard to come up with an intro. Just, and I was distracted last night at Mech Warrior Online. By the way, how are you guys liking all those uh, video game clips I've been putting up? Well, some of them not actual clips, but like complete videos. Have the slightest of editing to them. When only like three or four people are watching them. I guess that's not what my audience is. To be fair, the jumping puzzle thing is more for my benefit. Just, you know, I can just take, uh, um, if, if I'm playing Guild Wars 2 and I run across somebody and, oh, they're having difficulty with this, I'm just going to say, oh, by the way, I've got a repository of a number of relatively simple, easy to follow jumping puzzles located on my YouTube channel. I'm going to point you in this direction and let you sort it out on your own. You know, I can do that. The MechWarrior Online thing, uh, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with that. I recorded like two hours worth of stuff last night. I was in this cloudy mood that I'm in right now, so, I don't know, I need something to latch on to, you know, Star Trek is now a, is, is now channel exclusive, and you have to pay for an entire channel just to see one show, you know, it's not on broadcast anymore, I mean, don't get me wrong, digital media is the future, okay, whatever, but that being said, I don't want to pay for every individual channel. Wasn't that something they did back in the 80s and they're just now like doing packages for satellite? How would I know? I don't pay for the satellite and cable that I'm watching right now. Anyways, you know, I'm mean, like, Star Trek's going in directions I don't really like. I have any, I saw one episode of Discovery, much like the vast majority of other Trekkers who refuse to play for, pay for CBS All Access. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even going to bother. The guy who created the show isn't even part of the show. And I'm not talking about Gene Roddenberry. I'm talking about... Oh, was it Brian Fuller? Was that his name? I don't remember. Captions will correct me if I'm wrong. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, he left because what he was trying to create and what CBS was shoving down his throat were in conflict with each other. So he up and left and CBS took over. I don't care. Still haven't seen Star Wars Last Jedi. I really need to get my parents on that, because that's kind of a thing where all three of us see it at the same time in the theater. I mean, the last one of those we didn't see together was Return of the Jedi, I think. And not the special editions, either. I'm talking about the original one back when I was only one and a half years old. I think that's the last Star Wars we didn't watch together. So, um, You're making this video to get your head out of all of that, so make the video already. Come on. So I've known about this for a year, year and a half, something like that. But it comes from a non-mainstream toy manufacturer. So, I don't know, can you even call them toys, really? I, I guess they are collector's items, but it's not exactly high-end collector. It's because they make so few products, that's why the prices are higher. You know? I mean, it's, it's a starter company. So, as I understand it, it is. I, it, 
I don't, I don't follow it. But I was reminded that this exists, and I was like, oh yeah, I wanted to get a couple of those. So, here it is. I'm actually debating getting one of these for my dad, and then one of these for me. But, uh, I got greedy, and just, no, 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 just for me right now. If he wants to get his own, I'll tell him about it, and then he can buy one. Y'all have a lovely Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's. What did I get for Christmas? I got a couple of shirts, not this one, and I got a couple of Blu-rays. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and 2. Still haven't seen them. Oh, and a lot of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Um, what the hell? Oh, okay. I saw a promo and I was like, wait, why is it that this isn't from Bandai? Why? Okay. And then I also got, um, gift cards. You know. That's what I got. Power of the Primes. I'm really looking forward to that one. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> and some stuff I don't care about. Some stuff I really don't care about. And some other stuff I don't really care about. So as I understand it, this comes from a... It's not a TV series. It's not a cartoon. It's not a movie. It's... it's I don't think it's even a book. It might be... I, I think it's like a... It's a picture book, or not a picture book, but a, it's it's a compilation book. Not a, not even a compilation. What am I saying? It's a book filled with lots of paintings that are inspired by this story. They're inspired by inspired by this, and the concept is basically, and you've heard this before. It's just this is one company's take on this scenario. What would happen if World War II extended all the way into the 21st century and never ended? That's what this is based upon. That's what this is. It's called Acid Rain. Wow, this is a lot smaller than I thought it would be. I know nothing about characters and story other than what I've just told you, so what you see is what I've got. In terms of story and all that stuff. 128 scale military infantry unit. Armored vehicle switches between two forms. Standard joint for interchangeable parts. Full articulation and poseable action figure is included. Actually, I'd say there are two action figures included. And then on the back, it just shows what you can do with it, which is what these boxes tend to do. Shut up, Ava. Don't critique it. Never used it before. It's produced by Beaver Company. Link in the description below. You know, for something that claims to be 128 scale, I was expecting to stand, you know, about this tall, but at the rate we're going, it's going to be real tiny, unless it's, like, taken apart and stacked flat, which may be what it is. So this is actually a, well, it says deluxe set. This is actually a combination of two different sets. It's the larger robot here, and then there's a desert vehicle right there. Actually, they're both deserts or whatever. There's multiple variants of this thing. And there's also a number of different versions of this thing, which is just a repaint. This is a repaint, but this is both a repaint and a remold. There's actually different versions of this thing beyond just the colors. Ooh, wow. Oh my gosh, it's tiny. Okay, I don't know the names of these things. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the Speeder Mark I. Mark I S. Looks like ordinarily it would come with a backpack because there's an extra slot here that hasn't been filled up. This is a lot tinier than I thought it was. Tells you how often I get, uh, is it 128 scale? Yeah, 128 scale. I don't get 128 scale. I guess this just means it's three, in, it's three inches tall. So basically this fits right in with uh, maybe three and a half inch figures. Three inch figures. So basically G.I. Joe Sigma is where you're going with this. I had two items from G.I. Joe Sigma, which as I understand it was a dismal failure. Can't say I blame them because, you know, the scale, the scale of the figures just didn't match anything else that was being 
produced at the time. So there was no interactivity between different toy franchises. You couldn't put three and a half inch figures in it like you used to because they were all much too small. So I got the two vehicles. I got, uh, well, no, what am I saying? G.I. Joe is nothing but vehicles. I got the uh, the big VTOL her helicopter, helicopter, which is probably sitting up here. So I got that. I got bored with it. I didn't use it. It, it. it looked flashy. It looked neat. But I got bored with it and I sold it. So it just kind of sat in a corner and I didn't do anything with it and just meh. But I did keep the, um, what was it, the, the, the two-legged mech, whatever it is. I can't even remember what it was called. Had inter it had uh, interchangeable arms. Each arm had a different feature on it. You could put it on the left side or the right side. Um, it didn't have posable knees for whatever stupid reason. Um, and it came with a figure, and it came with a, a handle on the top, which is actually used for picking the thing up from the larger VTOL aircraft that I'd sold. I never used it for because the magnet wasn't that strong. So yeah, that's kind of the vibe I got off of this. So, Except this is made by a company that very much knows who their audience is that they're appealing to. Oh my good god, that is so tiny. What's that called? It's called the Speeder Mark I. You're putting tape on an area that has paint. Okay, then. Oh, okay. I was holding it in the wrong direction. This is not the front, but rather, this is the front. You can tell it has, because it has the tiniest of many guns on a ball joint. Oh my god, that is tiny, and the friction is real. So, in case you can't tell because, you know, focusing issues, um, it basically looks like a motorcycle, except it's got four giant wheels on the outside instead. So, the rider sits prone like this. Like, like you're riding on a motorcycle. It has handlebars, it's got a headlight, um, it's got the saddle, it's got the, the combustible engine with the radiators on the other side here, which you totally can't see, by the way. But, it just, ha just has these four, they don't really turn very well. I mean, they don't they don't spin very long attached to the outsides. So, you know, fair enough. And then the action figure, which I never collect, unless it comes with it. Maybe I should refocus the camera again, because I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, you guys over at Collection DX, this kind of reminds me of the, uh, this is almost the same size as those Glios figures you guys are all on about. I'm asking a chance to get the, the Glios mech figure. Grr. I wanted that. Didn't get one. Missed my opportunity. Oh my gosh, this guy is fully poseable. He's got an ankle ball joint. There's no face. He's 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 wearing a full 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 face helmet, so he has no face. It's just a thing. He has a tiny tiny wrist. It's just a swivel. Elbow goes 45, and this is all friction. There's there's no ratchet in here whatsoever. Does he have a waist? He does. The waist is a ball joint. Wow, so tiny, so tiny. And he's got little C-shaped hands. Doesn't come with any accessories. Oh, no, it's for, it's for the, the handlebars. You know what this reminds me of? Starcom. This is slightly, t slightly larger than Starcom. I miss Starcom. They wouldn't be able to do it nowadays because of the magnets and stupid parents. So, you know, that, that would not happen. Um, and spring-loaded features are so 20th century, so... Unless it's a... They're only spring-loaded features unless it's a missile launcher. What was awesome about, about Starcom... Good gosh, you can get, get this guy to just about any pose you want to. Holy crap. Wow. For as tiny as this is, and it's, it's that... It's that slightly gum... Not gummy, necessarily, but it's that... Uh, 
I, I want to say this is mostly PVC, now that I think about it. This right shoulder is going to give out real quickly. Oh, well. And it's the head on the double is on a single ball joint, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, you ever get your chance... You ever get a chance to get your hands on some Starcom? Absolutely do it. It's expensive nowadays. Because collector's item. It's a thing, and he's fully posable, and it's completely out of focus. There, now you can see it. It's all in focus now. Yay. Nice. Last night I saw one or two episodes, part of two episodes of The Knights of Sidonia. I'm not going to watch it again. It's just right on the edge of my threshold. It's, it's, it's right there on the level of you. Too, too graphic, too borderline gory, too you. So, I'm not going to watch it. I'd heard about it and I wanted to see it, but when I actually saw it, I'm like, ugh, no, no thank you. Don't try to convince me otherwise. I've already made up my mind. I barely know anything about it. Oh, I do know it's post-apocalyptic post Earth. Actually, there's no Earth whatsoever, so it's Titan AE. Okay, how do we get you in here? Ordinarily, this is sold as a separate set from this, but I got... It's, it, th so this is essentially a two-pack that costs a little bit more than it... or it costs a little less than if you bought them separately. So that's that's what that's what this box is. It's a two pack. So that being said, the two pack shows that yes, you absolutely can put the figure in there. What it doesn't show is how you actually get it in there, or how you uh, you've got to have that alien's power loader feel, obviously. There we go. Okay, I was looking for the joints. Safety roll cage. Gosh, everything bends really nicely on here. It's surprisingly flexible. Oh, I took his head off. I don't do motorcycle figures. Give me a break. Ah. Keep in mind, once he goes on here, I fully intend to keep him on here forever. So I'm not going to mess with this twice. <laughs> this roll cage comes down right on the back of his neck. There we go. That's the ah, what's it called? Speeder Mark One. It's Mark One S. Oh, maybe it is Mark One S because you know sand. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's that's all well and good to get into a nice little ATV form, but. Uh, there's a lot of extra ball joints in here. I wonder what they're going to use them for. What are those used for? I don't know. Let's find out together. What is that used for? I don't know. It's right there by his heels, or it's right there by his knees. So what's that for? I don't understand. Yeah, what's this little clip here for? It's right by his knee. It's brushing up against his knee. I can't tell if it moves further or not. It's not like the box is helping any. Is that an actual joint or is that a fictional joint? The clip is just right there. Okay, there's one picture of the transformed mode. Shows him with pistols, though. There we go. It's that fresh for the factory friction that I'm fighting right now. But it's also that thing of it's so small I don't know how to operate it properly. It's one of those, it's that thing. And you know, also I've never dealt with this before, so the clip is bumping into his knee. It's it's obviously it's a clip for his pistols, but how do you brush his right up against his knees and unless it make him very bow legged. They're always, always bumping into him. The knees are in the correct position. Like I said, he rides it like a motorcycle, so his butt's in the right place, so his knees are in the right place. Now there's one picture here. It shows him with a pair of pistols. 
or no, it shows them with one pistol, but and they are oriented the same way on the picture. I guess that's how it works. So here's the Speeder Mark One, and it's bipedal mode. The, the the problem is that there's there are hip holsters. Okay. He's riding like this, okay? And there's a pair of clips on either side of him, not attached to the figure, not attached to the, the, the soldier, not attached to the rider, but rather they're part of the the they're part of the, the vehicle itself. There's a pair of C clips right here. So obviously that's where you're supposed to attach the, the, the accessory weapons. And he's hanging onto it like this. Well, when the figure stands up, those C-clips fold, they, they, rotate around, they rotate around like this, and they're bumping directly against his knee. So, I don't know. It's like, you want to be able to get the thing to get into some walking poses, whatever it is, but at the same time, you're limited because those clips, or the, those accessory clip-ons, are just right there. It's a good thing it comes with a little, little gun turret there, you know. Probably won't even use the clips anymore, if ever. Nice range of motion on the ball turret, too. It's very tiny, it's not even an inch long. But, you know, 128 scale, so what are you going to do? So where's the ammo and machinery for the weapon itself? Like, there's a nice triple barrel, whatever, but, like, it's so tiny. 21st century World War II, Ava. Come on, get in, get in the game. I debated getting this just because it looks cute or whatever it is, so... Hmm. Neat idea. I like it. Just a little worried about those those knee clips or those. Actually, it, it's the it's the back of the thigh for the bipedal mode. That's where they're located. Do you need to put a display stand on it? No, you cannot. <laughs> Neat. Well, I hope you enjoyed the audio of that previous section because now there's a vacuum cleaner running. different figure with a different helmet. Ah, there are all the accessories. Okay. Wow, this is tiny. This is way tinier than I thought it was. Holy crap. Did they make this in, like, different scales? Maybe? Or should I have done better research before I got into this? Ava, what are you complaining about? Smaller is going to fit better in in the uh, in your bedroom where you have no space for your collection anymore. Good point. And how many times have I gone on the record by saying some of the smaller pieces of my collection are some of the better pieces of my collection? How many times have I said that? Now? Okay, I missed that piece. Still for a hundred dollars, a little over a hundred dollars for this combined set. So the. I don't know, man. Right. The, uh... Obviously, uh, Star Wars Stormtrooper-inspired helmet. At least the face guard is. No, no, the whole helmet, pretty much. It's like if you took, uh, a modern-day, um... Air Force, Army, um... Jet fighter helmet and then attach the face mask and rebreather of a, uh, or, or air filters of a, of a stormtrooper, and then painted it in camo. That's what this is. Looks pretty much the same as that figure. The only difference really is the head. Head sculpt is different. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. So many accessories. Ah. But some of those are necessary, so I'm going to have to pop it open anyways. Gosh, this is smaller than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like, you know, 9, 10 inches tall. It's not going to be anywhere near that. So we've got a sniper rifle. Sniper rifle, that's what I think it looks like. 
And here's the pistol for a boy here, which you're going to clip onto the back of the of the thigh, and it's going to get in the way even more of his uh, of his of his knees. So. Oh, it's so cute. It's so chubby. I love it. Duh. So they go on the front or the back? Ooh, ratcheted hips, um, waist joint. <laughs> That's probably the only ratchet in this thing. I was wrong. <laughs> The waist it has a has an ab crunch on it. I guess you could call it the waist. Oh, I forgot about this. You can attach this guy to the back of this guy. I forgot about that. Ooh, that's helpful. Oh, maybe that's what these are for. Maybe. It's hard to tell. That's cool. So what are these for? Gosh, if only it came with some instructions or better detailed packaging, because the packaging is just how to transform, not how to assemble. Maybe they're thinking, oh, you know, adults should be smart enough to know better at this point. Maybe that's what they're thinking. And they're probably right. Oh wow, those, tra those tractor treads are way smaller than I thought they were initially. Ah. Oh, but that does flip forward. All right. Okay, so it's not as much waist strain as it is transformation joint. Okay. I guess this is one of those transformers morphing toys, morphing morphing toys, where it uses all of the uh, it uses articulation for the robot mode as part of the transformation. Yikes. Yikes. How do I get that past? Yikes. Does this extend? Does this turn? Is this die cast metal? No. This is how you transform it. Uh -huh, yeah. I know where it has to go, just how do I get it there? It's hard to get a hold of. There we go. Forcing it, forcing it, forcing it. There we go. Ooh, has a tight tolerance in there. Yikes! What is this? Huh? <laughs> the mud flap guards. Huh? <laughs> of course, no sooner do I get one of them in. The other one starts protesting. There we go. It's there. For as simple a transformation as this is, this is unusually difficult. So they get things where I want them to go. I mean, the plastic quality, plastic quality is fine. Just getting them actually into those places they want me to get them into is the hard part. Is that in place? That in place? Yes. So, there's this one fitting and not the other one. I was not fighting friction there, by the way. <laughs> you always know you're in trouble when you hear something click and it's like, wait, I didn't do that. <laughs> and then that one goes in just like a glove. I wonder if this is like meant to be rolled under its own power or if it's like a little box car that just, you know, you, you shift it into neutral, you get out of the cockpit and then it gets it gets trained along, you know. Let's see. Open this up. Feature less cockpit. Stick the driver in here. What are these clips for? And keep in mind, all of these came out before that, uh, what was it called? Iron, uh, um, was it Eagle One? The Megabot Mark III versus the Karatas? 
which we were all looking forward to for two years and was a dismal disappointment because American reality TV sucks and that's exactly how they portrayed it up. You know, just here's the venue, here are the camera locations, go. Instead, they had to put goddamn commentators in. How, like, that's the problem with these commentators is like, how, how do they know what to say and what to think and what to do? Because, well, they've never commentated on it before and they're, they're all no names. Like, nobody cares. Just, just show us the robots fighting. And what's the opening maneuver? Ooh. Oh, it's a dismal failure for... Uh, 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 uh. Yes, I too got suckered into it. And no, I'm not disappointed they did. I, like, I'm glad it happened. I'm just really disappointed with the results. Oh my gosh, that hand would not have put in there or drawn in there unless they did that. Okay, this is a figure that's also never coming out of the cockpit. He's not even going to get the chance to use the rifle. Oh my god, that is in there so tight. What the hell? I guess you could say it fit like a glove. Didn't I already use that pun a few months ago? And there is the Stronghold ST1. Or at least one variation of it. I'm guessing ST1 is the model number. And then there's this little tab on the back, so when you get multiples of these things, you can attach the front to the back and just peg them all along and choo-choo, you know, that kind of thing. The irony of that statement, no actual functional wheels on the bottom. Hmm. So the cockpit, not necessarily head, can turn all the way around 360 degrees. No, you go in there, you stay in there. Or was I proven wrong the instant I said it? It can turn 360 degrees, but the, the, the cockpit opens up for some strange reason. Or the cockpit hatch opens up. And then you can open this up. So there's a little, little bubble hatch in the top. Oh! I forgot about this. You can also open the hatch like that. Now he's not gonna he's not gonna come out that way. God help you if he does. But I imagine like in fiction that's how he gets in and out. And he's got a pair of uh, machine gun turrets. Very friction heavy, I'd like to point out. He's got a pair of or I'm sorry he's got a set of four machine guns. Go on either side with little drums on the outside. And actual barrels. Like you can actually, there's actual barrels on here. It's not just flat plastic and that's it, but they actually took the time to make, oh yeah, by the way, that's, it's not just, you know, a thin piece of plastic, whatever it is, but there's an actual hole on the front of it. Why can't Bandai of America or Bandai Japan ever do that? Correction, why can't Hasbro and Takara ever do that? You know, just saying. Yes, this is the Stronghold ST, yeah, Stronghold ST1. Not Mark 1, I might have said that wrong. Okay, so now let's transform it. I'm going to try and do this so you guys can see what the process is. There's like three tabs on the underside here that are all lined up properly. I've got to dig around in. And like I said, factory fresh friction. And then, right, the waist joints. So I gotta free up even more tabs. There's one, there's the other. Oh, that's way easier now. Yeah, that's because you're pulling it apart. And then the waist joint folds back. And you flip the heat, you flip the, uh, the hips as you're going. So it gets it a little more centered over the figure. And then, there's some, let's see, oh, how do I, okay, <laughs> you want me to do that, but then you block me from doing that by doing that, huh? 
is a pair of panels here on the top which cover up covers up this and so you have to remove that in order to get access to both the shoulder and the elbow joint you know what? I'm gonna do it this way and that's gonna make no difference whatsoever there we go okay. so there's panel folds around not making this easy for you, are they? Ratchet in the shoulders, ratchet in the shoulders. There we go. Getting the cobwebs out. Getting the cobwebs out. And you unhook this. Turn it down. Hook this, or you untab this, hold it down. Keep in mind, this particular version of the Stronghold is not meant for melee combat, which is specifically what we got. This is purely fire support. Now you could take the, you could take these these weapon canisters, and you could just you know crunk like that in an emergency situation. But at that point, you really shouldn't let that happen. He said while playing Mech Warrior Online. <clears throat> which has no melee whatsoever, even though it very much should. I'd also like to point out that this figure has one, two, three pegs on each arm, and two on the crotch, or, you know, crotch plate, for little peg holes that are in the are, are in the toe of each figure. So you can actually attach the figure. You can peg the figures on top of this. What is this for? That is for that. I don't know what that's for. There's little doors on the side here of these weapon canisters, but I don't know what these panels are for. Do they hold the weapons? Oh, it's far more practical than that. It's a footstand for figures that want to hang out SWAT style along the side in the in the vehicle mode. So basically, you clamp the figures' hands onto these. And then there's a foot stand right there you can fold up. Nice. So what are the weapon canisters? Well, all versions of the Stronghold come with these quad machine guns sitting up here up top. So that's that's the, the standard feature. But individually, what makes this particular version interesting... Wow, the friction on those turrets is real. Um, the feature on this, stand it quickly, you push this door, or you push this on the side, you push this on the side, you push the button on the top, honey, or you push the button on the inner side. Okay, it was the whole reason I bought this, so why aren't they working? Gosh, if only it came with some instructions. It just shows you pictures. It doesn't show you what the actual... Okay. So anyways, the point of me getting this particular variation, whether it's the sand desert version or whatnot, is because it's actually a missile mech. Macross missile massacre for the win, by the way. I was raised on the, mech, uh, the the missile massacre, so let's see. I believe you push these buttons. You push some buttons somewhere. Seriously? How do these come out? You push in. You pull down. That looks like a button to me. Wait. Okay, uh, seriously, how do these missiles fire? I know they do, just how? Oh, cool. There's also a kind of sort of wrist swivel. 
Nice. Okay, so is that going to free them up? No, it did not. <sighs> Alright, fine. I'll argue with this thing later. But the point is, the tips, the warheads of the missiles, will actually, will act are actually stored in back. You open up the doors, and then the missiles just stick out a little bit. That's what it's supposed to be. I thought there was a button that opens them up, though, or that, that gets them to extend, but I'll be darned if I could find it. There's very obviously a thing right here. Am I supposed to pull? Is that what you want me to do? If you want me to pull, that's a very poor place to do it. Do you want me to slide upwards? No. Do you want me to pull back? Oh, you pull back. That's what it was. You, oh my god, that spring. Holy shit. It didn't look like you pull backwards, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to test all four cardinal directions. Oh, okay, you pull backwards. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted. And there you can see, not only the, the doors are individual, you know, they open, each door splits in half, so it's actually two separate doors, and then the, the, the warheads stick out a little bit. And the button to do so is this little black tab on the outside here you just pull back. I mean, I knew all these features existed. It's just trying to get to it is the hard, is, is the tricky part. And having never done it before, and... Well, now that I know where everything is and how it works, I still freaking like it. It's, it, again, it is, and what are these, what are these clips for? Seriously, what? I don't even... Okay, so it can't fit there. Is it for a feature that I don't have? Is that what this is? Goes there, goes there, goes there, goes there, and there. Well, what's that side for? I'll look it up later. I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't know what it's for. It doesn't say. It doesn't show. It shows everything else it can do. Oh, by the way, how do I get these attached? That goes there. But how does it get there is my question. Oh, okay. Those back of the thigh clips I was just talking about? Those are what those clips are what you attach to those bars on the back there. You know, for all the AutoCAD that obviously went into this thing, you'd think they'd have realized, oh, that's gonna be a challenge. It's gonna be a close tolerance. Unfortunately, the C-clips are nice and tight. This is meant more for storage than it is for the guy to actually ride on the back there. But I'm going to leave him on there because shut up. So yes, it's just a pair of C-clips that attach to a pair of bars on the back of the torso, and that's it. What are these for? Where do they go? I don't know, because they're not involved in attaching the motor. The so I, how do I keep blanking on these names? The speeder. It's not for the speeder to attach, because I've already proved you don't need it. So what are these for? And they obviously have the camo, so they've been painted. Actually, they've been molded. But what are, what are these for? Okay, one of these arms is going to pop off. I know not which. There we go. I want to see if these go on here. Okay, that's what those are for. Okay, got it. Standard joint for interchangeable parts. So in other words, <coughs> these things I couldn't figure out are actually accessories that you ordinarily wouldn't use. But you can use them if you've got two or more of these things. 
You attach them to the shoulder joint. I don't know if you attach them to the hip joint. I don't think you can do that because those are ball joints in there. So I'm not going to I'm not going to try and pull, pull that apart. And then you so you can take these things. And let's see. I got to do this quick. So if you have two or more of these things, you can take the arms and you can peg one on top of the other, or you can peg it somewhere else. You could you could peg it down here. You can peg it down here. Here, uh, there's two on the on the side of the torso. There's two on the other side of the arms. Oh, I wonder if I can make it like an over the shoulder muscle launcher. Like over the, over the shoulder cannons are one thing, but the mainstay is missile launchers. Okay, all right. So that didn't work just because I didn't know. Gee, if only there were some instructions provided. God, listen to me. The transformation is to configure out how things work. Well, technically, this is a transformer, so you should have known it by now. Nope. You're smart enough to not do that, Ava. Come on. Oh, yeah. There we go. Quad missile launchers on one arm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. <sighs> oh, that is awesome. Okay. All right. Mystery solved. So, yes. Acid rain. And I want to say these are the only... Um, oh, boy. I want to say these are the only... Um, figures like whether they're repaints or not these are the only figures that they offer up I don't think there's like there's not a helicopter there's not a forklift vehicle I think that's as close as you can get to a forklift there's not a um, you know the, the only thing they've released so far is the speeder and the stronghold it's just different variations of this but they have released some um, some uh, posable soldier figures. They have released some of those as standalone kits that come with different accessories. So, a collectible figure eh, with quite reasonable articulation. It's a very stubby thing, and this is not your convention. This is not your typical. Um, how can I say it? This is not a design that. that this is a very awkward. Not looking, but it's an awkward functioning thing. It's it's kind of a like a second generation design. Like they got it out of the on the front lines as fast as they possibly could. But this this is like one step beyond prototype is what this thing is. They didn't have the opportunity to make multiple versions of this. So it's not meant to be. Um, it's not me it, it, like in canon. It would not be really flexible like there's no knee joint there it's never meant to have a knee joint think of it more in terms of the dreadnoughts from Warhammer 40,000 you know they're these big clunky you know they walk like this is is how they move around that's pretty much how these things are going to move on the battlefield so they're very much not meant for um, you know fast strikes they may have, you know, a motor for the tractor treads, but that just kind of gets them to the location, and then they have to stand up. So this is, in an interesting way, this is a case of what would a practical transformation be like? Because it's not fast when it's two-legged, but it can deal with terrain, and it can deal with another one-on-one. -on -one. But it transforms in order to get it to the battlefield faster. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So if you're going to do a giant robot in reality that transforms in reality, this is, this is something like what you would do. There is a reason for it to transform, not just because the collectors like collecting transformable robots. That's all well and good. But in canon, there is a reason for it to transform. It is, it is worth it, and, yeah. So, I mean, if, if you're looking for um, dynamic action poses, well, you're not really going to get it in the legs. It can do splay leg, and then, it, you know, you can kind of do granny slippers one in front of the other, and then maybe tilt them out to the sides. So that's about all you're going to get with the legs. It's not meant for articulation there, but the arms have a very wide range of motion. You can point them pretty much anywhere so long as the missile containers don't end up bumping into everything in the process. I wonder if I can trigger this with the doors closed. Cool. Let's 
spring is really tight. Eesh. Okay, all right. Cool, cool. And uh, I think I'm gonna put these back in the box because, like, I'm never gonna use them ever. Well, I don't think the weapons even attach anywhere on the outside for storage. Um, I'm inclined to say no. There's no external weapon storage. Okay. Okay. Definitely for collectors who understand what's going on and who can have an appreciation for, um, an appreciation for rugged robot designs. There's not a lot of flash of these things. Yes, they have missile. This particular version has missile launchers and it has machine guns, but it's very practical. There are very few of them. This is this is real robot, which kids are usually not going to understand. You don't see a lot of little kids getting to pat labor, except for the fact that they were brightly colored robots. I mean, beyond that, they didn't give a shit about the storyline of the characters, you know? So this is kind of that thing. Like, we're going to put our efforts into making transformable vehicles that function in a realistic way. And we're not going to paint them up. So kind of Dorvac kind of feel to these things. Dorvac and Votums, that kind of thing. Dorvac might be a bad example, because I, do, I actually I don't know Dorvac or Votums, but... It very very evocative of real robot hardcore real robot genre is what this is aiming for. The Strider behaves in a similar manner. Um, the legs are meant for terrain that a wheeled vehicle or even a tractor via tractor vehicle would not be able to move through. That is what the Strider is for. So it can get out to that location quickly because it has four wheels. But then if it becomes an impassable terrain for wheeled vehicles, then it can still provide it can still provide support. It can still move around by having legs, and that is what the Strider is for. And again, it's not going it's it's not speed that that comes with those legs. The, the legs are there for getting over rougher terrain. That's what the legs are for. There, the, the the legs are not meant for jumping. They're not meant for um, strafing side to side. That's not what they're for. And yet it still has attributes of a motorcycle that slipped in. I really like that. This is as far as I'll be going. Um, there's another, there's like two other versions of this. There's one that had really long, sp has a really long spike. Instead of paired missile launchers, there's a really long spike that comes out of it. And then there's another version that has actual grappling hands on it for actually a very meaty looking, you know, three-fingered things that can like grab in and tear through. Uh, tear through metal or it can punch through a uh, punch through a brick wall plaster brick wall stuff like that So but you know, I'm the missile mech fan. So that's why I got this version The 88th sand deluxe which is very much misspelled by the way. I just noticed that's not how you spell deluxe stronghold st1s and speeder mark 1s By who's the company again? I apologize. Who's the company? Beaver company b25.com cool and so with that this is Avi Unit 4A saying thanks for tuning in